My name's Greg MacArthur. I'm from Scotland originally. Uh, currently ranked four on the SAA Pro Tour. Um, day to day, I'm the head squash pro at Sleepy Hollow Country Club in Westchester, New York. First time at the club. Um, the facilities are amazing. I'm excited to be here and I think the facility is pretty new, so it's kind of fun to see the, the new courts and uh, there's a lot of activity at the club, which is great to see as well. Uh, my name is Manik Mathur. I grew up in Mumbai, India. Uh, moved over here when I was 17 years old to play squash at Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut. And I'm currently the head squash professional at the Racket and Tennis Club in New York City. This is stunning. This is maybe one of the best facilities I've been to. It's very open. It's, uh, it's very inviting right off the bat. Normally squash facilities are dingy and dark and in a basement somewhere, but this is just a stunning facility. The best thing I can say is um, don't be afraid to overhit the ball and use the height and the width of the court. I think a lot of us who come from a singles background are very afraid to let the ball come off the back wall. But I feel like when you play doubles, if you leave the ball short and allow people to volley and control the service line, that's what gets you in trouble. So make sure you really think about overhitting, trying to find the back wall as much as you can. Hi, I'm Chris Callis. Uh, I grew up 10 minutes from this club, actually. Uh, I went to Penn Charter, uh, and now I live in New York, number two ranked SDA squash player in the world. Um, I grew up playing just down the road at Chestnut Hill Academy and then at Germantown Cricket Club, uh, only a stone's throw away. Uh, born and raised Winmore. But, you know, uh, it's funny, as soon as I got here, I was joking with Richard that like every time I come back to the club, uh, I'm super jealous of everyone now who has these beautiful brand new facilities. When I was growing up here, uh, you know, I remember playing down here in the dungeon next to the doubles courts. Um, in the super old hardball singles courts. So these these kids na nowadays growing up the program kind of don't know how good they have it. Uh, it's amazing, I mean the program here is fantastic. It's always had a ton of people, a lot of enthusiasm, um, but now with the facilities this way, it's really sort of best in class. Uh, I'd say to just think about where you're standing on court and your positioning. It's really easy to get lost in watching the ball fly around on court. Uh, and if you actually think about staying farther up in the court, it makes every ball that you're trying to get to a lot easier. Um, and you'd be amazed at how much better you'll get just by thinking about staying a little farther in front of the tee than you have before. Hi, my name's John Russell. I'm currently the uh, boys squash coach at Fitzball Academy School out in Newtown Square. Uh, currently ranked number one in the world at doubles. Um, moved over here from England about 17 years ago. So I've been playing doubles now for 15 or 16 years. Uh, it's a fantastic club. I've been here a couple of times before for the uh, high school nationals when it's been here. Uh, never actually played on a double score, so looking forward to seeing uh, uh, how they play. They, they look like they're the old school wood, which is the course that I like. And um, obviously, you know, you made a couple of changes in your squash program, and uh, so that some of them are good friends. Both of them are actually good friends of mine. And so I'm, I've, uh, I've heard good things about where the program's at right now. The big thing, you need to talk to your partner and have a game plan when you go on the court. If you're just going on there and kind of playing as two individuals, you're, you're not going to have as much success as you do if you work as a team. And then the, the main thing I find amateurs do is that they don't hit the ball high enough, they don't hit to the back enough, and then when they do get taken to the back, they stand too far back and they're not moving up in front of the red line.